he's an acupuncturist, and he flew all the way in from New Zealand. Uh, I spoke with him. He's a friend of mine. And he said, yes. He says, I'm going to the States. He says, uh, he says, I'm going to California. I'm going to, you know, do a little something there and do a presentation. And then I'm going to Dallas. And I said, well, wait a minute. What about Louisiana? Where do we fit on the, you know, on this, this global scale of yours? Mm -hmm. And he says, well, he says, do you think I should come? I said, yes. So, mm -hmm. so here he is. And um, he's been doing acupuncture for a little over 20 years. And in his practice, and in my practice, I, I do promote uh, health items. And so he, he only promotes one, is what I found out. And uh, that's the, the stem cell activators. And I asked him, why just one? You know, you can sell this and that. He says, I only sell what works. So this is what's working uh, for his client uh, base, his patients. And uh, so I'm going to uh, step out, skate out, and uh, here he is. So basically, I'm just going to start talking and, and tell you about how stem cells work, what they do, where they come from, and what we can do to support them, and basically my role in how I actually started taking this amazing product, uh, which started off this whole journey of mine, which has been literally a 20-year journey uh, this month, when it's all started. <coughs> so... My story begins on a small island far, far away a long, long time ago. And that island was Sri Lanka. I was over in Sri Lanka working in a hospital. And I was there with two of my friends. We were doing Chinese medicine, you know, treating 40, 50, 60 people a day. We were doing that six days a week. So we were really seeing a lot of people and, you know, really helping a lot of people. So that was good. One of the things that happened with me, though, is while I was there, I got bitten by a friendly little mosquito and ended up with dengue and hemorrhagic fever. And when I was on my way home, we, I, I actually came down sick in Singapore and I lost uh, 12 kilos in weight, about 26 pounds, uh, in nine days while I was in hospital. And then that photo was taken when we arrived home and I lost about another 10 kilos after that, so another 20 pounds off that. So there wasn't really a whole lot of me left. So, and I was like that for eight years. So it was like quite a bit of a dreary sort of time. I had 24 hours a day intestinal gut pain. Whenever I ate certain foods, like I had a cup of tea, uh, garlic, cinnamon, mixed herbs, a banana, um, an apple, certain vegetables, if I had just these random types of foods, I'd have quite a bad reaction. I'd start getting the shakes, I'd start having palpitations, sort of a bit like now I'm talking in front of people. <laughs> sort of now. So I'd have palpitations, get the shakes, I'd have cold sweats, my body's energy would start just shutting down where I'd just like feel like I just wanted to collapse on the floor. And then I'd end up in bed for two or three days until whatever I ate actually passed through my system and I'd have like severe pain and couldn't do anything. So I was like that for eight years. And I spent like, tens of thousands of dollars on different specialists, different types of treatment, uh, all sorts of different um, supplements, 
Uh, I bought a $1,200 twin gear masticating juicer, the best top of the line one that I could get my hands on. And I did 20 kilos of carrots, five kilos of spinach a week as my base juice, just to, you know, with all my other vegetables on top. And I did that for about nine months. And again, I had no change in my health at all. I still had all the same pain and you know, hadn't put on any weight, hadn't regained any energy. And then one day, November 07, I saw a little video on the internet and it basically broke down to this, that stem cells are your body's own repair system. The more stem cells you have in circulation, the more repair your body does. And the more repair your body does, the healthier you become. So I thought, well, I've tried everything else. I'll have a go at that. So I started, I ordered that, and it was really hard because the company at that stage wasn't open for business in New Zealand. So I had to become a, an American person. I had to have an American address, um, postal code, tax ID number, the whole banana, phone number and everything. And then I'd buy it uh, in LA. It would get shipped to Michigan, and then it would get shipped, double shipped back to my place in New Zealand. So it was a, quite a drama to get hold of this product. So anyway, I got it. It sat on my shelf for about two weeks before I took my very first capsules. And it sat there because I always had this, this worry about you know, trying a new food or a new supplement. Because just in case it just triggered that pain again. So it sat there for about two weeks. I then started on the product and there was no sort of no reaction at all. So I just carried on. And then after a few weeks, I said to my wife, Tess here, I said, ah, stuff's just like everything else. Hasn't done a thing. So I had some bottles there. So I just kept on going. And then by the time I got to like mid-January, I said to Tess, I says, oh, hey, I've been eating this, that, and the other over Christmas, and it hasn't affected me in the same way. And she goes, just whatever your husband wants to wear. She goes, um, yeah, she goes, yeah, you know, you haven't been complaining as much lately. So I thought, oh, okay, that's good. So we carried on, and then about two weeks later, like three hours after dinner, because if I'd eaten something that was going to aggravate me, while it was in my stomach, I was fine. But then about an hour later, when it started to empty out into the gut, that's when I'd get all the reactions. And so about three hours after dinner, Tess said to me, how was tea tonight? I said, it was fine, why? And she goes, oh, because I put garlic in there. And I just froze. And I was just waiting for that pain to come, but it didn't come. So we carried on. I said, look, don't go putting garlic into everything because you'll just jinx it and I'll, I'll just go backwards. So yeah, that was fine, carried on. And then on about two weeks later, the Friday afternoon, because that was always my food trial time, because if I ate something and it aggravated me, I had the weekend to recover. So Friday afternoon, I had a cup of tea because that was guaranteed to put me into bed. And I had the cup of tea and no reaction at all. And already I started to put on some more weight. My energy was getting better. Um, all the depression and anxiety and stuff that I had, that was starting to shift. So we carried on and basically within a few months, or basically after that, I was sort of eating anything and everything that I wanted to eat. And <coughs> about a year later, that, that's me there. So I regained all my health, my weight had come back on, and I was fine. So, a year later, and now, 20 years later. No, 12 years later. So, yeah, so that was sort of my journey. I then bought a whole lot of product into clinic. I got 80 bottles, and I gave four bottles out to 20 different people. I said, here you go, take this, two bottles a month, or four capsules a day. And they went away, they took that, and 18 out of 20 people wanted more product. So I thought, that's it this is a product that really does the work. And I knew that it worked for me. And I looked at all of the science. Because when, when I got all of these results, I could have stopped taking it because my body had repaired itself. But the more I looked into stem cells and what they do and how they work, I realized that, you know, as most of us all here know, that we lose millions of cells every day. And our body's ability to stay healthy relies on the replacement of those cells. And as we age and as we get stressed, etc. Well, this is half of my presentation that I'm all talking about. Um, as we get stressed, our body doesn't release the stem cells the way it should do, the way it needs to do. So therefore, we get cells that die off that then don't get replaced. 
and those organ and tissues just get a bit weaker as a result of that. So I'm just going to go through now. Oh, so this is that message that I was talking about. Stem cells are your body's own repair system. The more stem cells you have, the more repair your body can do, and the more repair your body does, the healthier you become. So now we're not talking, um, or rather we are talking about the stem cells that are the adult stem cells. These are the stem cells that are in our bone marrow. So we're not eating stem cells, we're not taking stem cells from anywhere else. We're just supporting our body's own repair system. So stem cells are a very unique cell. No, they, these aren't fried eggs, green eggs and ham. They're stem cells. So a stem cell is a cell that's in our bone marrow. And we die with the same stem cells that we're born with. So it's quite a big sort of concept there. So we've got a stem cell in the bone marrow, and whenever it's needed to go and do repair work, it just divides itself. So we've got two identical cells. And one of those cells will float off out into circulation to go and do the work it needs, and the other cell stays there in the bone marrow. So our bone marrow population stays the same throughout our entire life. And in these stem cells, they can come out and they can differentiate and turn into any type of cell in our body. So how do these cells do this? Well, every tissue in your body, every cell in your body has a limited lifespan. So our eye cells, they only live for two to three days and then they die. Our gut cells live for three to five days and then they die. Our heart cells live about four months and then they die. So we're always in this constant state of renewal and repair right through the entire length of our lives. And so what happens is that when one of these tissues, or when one of these cells gets to the end of its life, it sends out a signal to the bone marrow. The bone marrow then releases stem cells into circulation. And as they travel through circulation, they'll come in contact with a little chemical messenger on the side of the blood vessel, which is where that dying cell is. And then it migrates through the capillary wall, the little blood vessel wall, and then it will switch on the gene and it will become a brand new healthy cell of that type. And then what happens is that old dying cell, that just sort of like shrivels up, it goes out, and then it gets taken out and taken out of our body. So this is happening all the time. Um, so that's about the dying and the aging cells. This is the same process when we have a, um, a damaged cell. So if we're out doing the gardening and we drop a brick on our toe, or we get up and we bang our head on a shelf or something like that, those damaged tissues will send out the signal to the bone marrow. The bone marrow releases the stem cell, and then that travels to the, that area of damage, and that will actually turn into a brand new cell at that time. If it was my toe with a brick on it, it would turn into you know, the skin, the ligaments, the cartilage, you know, the uh, blood vessels, the nerve cells. Whatever my toe needed to repair, that's what my stem cell would turn into. And also another aspect of this, um, anybody out there exercise? Yep, excellent. Every time you're exercising, every time you put strain on a muscle, you're actually causing damage to that muscle. And so if you're able to increase your circulating stem cells, then you can actually increase that repair rate. So I know bodybuilders are going, oh, I need the protein, need the amino acids, need all of this stuff. All of that stuff is fantastic. That feeds the cells, but it's the stem cells that actually replace those damaged cells with brand new ones. So we find that people who exercise, if they support those stem cells before and after exercise, their recovery and their energy is a lot, lot better. So stem cells can become heart, kidney, cartilage, lung cells, brain cells. And whenever a stem cell turns into one of these cells, like a heart cell, you get better circulation, better heart rhythm. When they turn into cartilage cells, you can get better movement, less pain, better mobility. So all of that sort of thing. So eye cells, pancreatic, liver. So whatever a stem cell turns into, you get better at what that cell does. Now, we're talking a lot here about the physical repair of our body. So your stem cell here turn into your heart and your liver, that's all really good. But at a deeper level, those stem cells can't turn into insulin. They can't turn into T3, T4 thyroid hormones. 
Your stem cells can't turn into dopamine in the brain. But your stem cells can turn into the glands that produce those hormones. So at one level, we're getting this physical repair, which is fantastic. But on a deeper level, as those stem cells turn into the glands, and then they start secreting the right levels of hormones in the body, it really starts balancing that whole health out. It's like having an aquarium full of fish. And if you get a sick fish, it's usually not because the fish is sick, it's because the environment that it's living is sick. So you can go along like the doctors, take out that sick fish, and you think, yeah, everything's okay, because they've treated that symptom. But really, we need to look at changing that environment. And if we're able to you know, get those hormones and all those chemical messengers back to the right level, then that's like changing the water, changing the environment. So our body is actually becoming healthier within itself. So as your stem cells are doing all this work, we get like a new intestinal lining every five days. We get a new liver and a new pancreas every three to five years. Because those cells are dying off and they're being replaced. Liver and pancreatic cells, they die off quicker than lung cells. Oh, I know about the same. But they definitely die off quicker than, a, than a heart cells. Because it takes about 15 to 20 years to get a new heart. So again, this is all about those cells dying off and just being replaced. I know it sounds like I might be repeating a few things here, but it's quite a simple sort of message that we're just supporting that body's ability to actually repair itself, to replace those cells. So why do we need to support the stem cells if they're out there doing such a fantastic job? It's basically because as we age, our bone marrow becomes stickier. So the dying cells are sending out this message saying we need some help, we're about to die, but the bone marrow becomes stickier. So no stem cell is being released. So you end up with cells dying off that aren't being replaced. And that heart just gets a little bit weaker over time. That liver, a little bit weaker. The brain, etc. The muscles. You know, as we get older, we start to atrophy. It's because we've got cells dying off that aren't being replaced. And you'll see people that um, get like a pinched nerve at S1, and you'll see some atrophy in the calf muscle, where the calf muscle normally, you know, like that sort of thing, and you'll see one side of it will just waste away. And that's because the brain's not getting a signal to say that that part's not there anymore. So it goes, oh, that part's not there, don't need to send the stem cells, and then it just withers away. Now they have an operation to release the nerve, and then as the brain starts connecting, oh, that is there, then they start going there and they can actually grow that muscle back. So that's about your body knowing whether they are or not. So other things also that help with or reduce stem cell release is stress. And that can be physical and emotional. Poor sleep, toxins, too much or too little exercise and illness, etc. But you'll hear about this too much exercise. You know, you hear about these people that, you know, they're in their mid-30s, early 40s, they're out there doing these multi-sport events, you know, the kayaking, the swimming, the biking, and all that sort of stuff, and they drop dead of like a heart attack. You know, they've had so much damage going on in their body that their stem cell release rate just isn't enough to fix everything that needs fixing. So then there's a deficit and just things fall apart. Oh, yeah, collapse, right? Fall apart. So less circulating stem cells ultimately re results in a lower quality of life. Because we're going along, we've got the injuries that just aren't repairing. We've got the, um, the gut problems that just aren't repairing. And these things can go on and go on. Um, the mental health that starts going down. And ultimately, if that keeps going, then this can develop into illness and disease. So this picture here is what someone would see if they've got macular degeneration. Now, we're all losing, everybody here, we're all losing the same amount of eye cells as somebody with macular degeneration. Apart from we're just replacing them at a higher rate, so we're not noticing that decline. We're all losing the same amount of brain cells as someone with Parkinson's, but we're actually replacing those cells at a higher level, so we don't notice any decline. So this is what sort of goes on there as well. So, and same with pancreas, um, with diabetes. 
we're all losing those same amount of stems, uh, pancreatic cells as well. So we're just replacing them faster. And it's um, like the pancreas itself, the pancreas can actually deteriorate by 60% before you show your first symptoms of diabetes. The, part, the brain that is responsible for the production of dopamine, that can deteriorate by 70% before you show your first symptoms of Parkinson's. So when people start, like on the, on the products and help start taking the stem cell nutrition, people go, oh, you know, I want to take it for this or this or this, something that they're aware of, but they don't know what else is going on in their body. And this is why we sort of like talk to people, and, and Leslie's spoken very you know, well about this, about being sort of like helping to support your stem cells for a longer period of time, because we don't know what's actually going on in our bodies. And thanks to a company called Sorol, we've got Stem Enhance Ultra. And Stem Enhance Ultra is made up of an algae from a lake in Klamath, uh, which is in Oregon, so Klamath Lake. And it's made from a seaweed that comes off the coast of uh, Tasmania in Australia and there's also one other compound that comes from a, another algae and that helps with uh, the release of um, epithelial progenital cells that actually help to build the roadways, um, build the blood vessels that can help deliver circulation to new cells in the body. So it's been shown to increase 34% stem cell circulation within just 60 minutes of taking two capsules. So it's quite a significant amount. And if people are doing that sort of once, twice, three times a day, depending on what's going on in their health, you know, your body's ability to repair, we talk about resources. This is like a really good resource for your body to be able to really turn things around and really create health. And then some other benefits that Stem Enhance Ultra has is that there's a full range of 67 different vitamins, minerals, and nutrients in there as well. So it's really nourishing, and because they're from a plant source, they're actually bioavailable straight into the system within the body. Being a blue-green algae, it's also got phycocyanin, which is the blue part of the blue-green algae, and that's very um, heavily researched as an anti-inflammatory product. Um, so it actually contains that in there as well. So quite often we'll talk to people and they'll say, Oh, you know, I took the Stem Enhance for like a month and I was like, fantastic, my pain went away and I've been able to get around so much better. But now that I've stopped it, my pain's come back. And it's like, oh, well, it stopped working. What's happening there is that they're getting the benefits of, this, of the um, anti-inflammatory effect to reduce the pain that they're experiencing, but they haven't taken it long enough for the repair and the regeneration of the tissue within those <coughs> joints. So again, that would be more of sort of like a symptomatic relief as opposed to a deep underlying, you know, why is that pain there in the first place? So that's what happens with that. That's why we get sort of that at certain times as well. No, I'm not going to try and say that one. We've got this stuff in there. It's called PEA. I'll try it. Phenyethamine. I always get an extra L in there somehow. PEA, it's a mood enhancement. Anyone here eat chocolate and feel better after they eat chocolate? Yep. <laughs> chocolate contains PEA. It's a molecule that your brain makes when you're in a state of joy, or it helps you be in a state of joy. So when you go away on holiday, when you're doing something you love, you're out walking in the bush, you're doing your art or you know, your whatever it is people do, your brain starts producing PEA. And that makes you know, your hunger go away, all your stress, your money worries, they all disappear. And so that's that PEA that's going on. And with that, when you actually increase that PEA, people say, well, what's the side effect of taking stem and hearts? I said, oh, well, it's a feeling of joy. And like, we all have that little laugh, oh, oh, oh. But it's a real thing. It is actually that, that PEA that is a feeling of joy. Um, it's also been shown that people with low levels of PEA have a poorer outlook on life. They have um, more depression, lower, mo uh, lower motivation, and things like that. Also, another thing that we see or that has been reported is that children with ADHD and ADD, 
they have low levels of PEA in the brain. And so they're trying to do their work and trying to stay focused, and then they'll, there'll be a little noise over here, and it's like, oh, what's that? And then they'll see a flash of light in the, in the window, and they'll be like, oh, what's that? I know, I think I would have been ADHD if, I, if that was around when I was young. But, so if you're able to increase the PEA with those kids, they are actually able to focus and stick down and do their work a lot better than when they don't. Um, so that is another side of the care. Uh, it's also very powerful with the immune system as well. So we do see that you know, coughs, colds, flus and that don't hang around as long, well, but also more the um, regulating that autoimmune system. So we see a lot of autoimmune disorders you know, really change. And I see that a lot in clinic where you, know, you have the, the lupus, the MS, the arthritis, etc. We see change in those really quite quickly. And um, just for that part, uh, we don't treat, cure, diagnose any medical condition. We're a food, and therefore food doesn't treat things. So that's the disclaimer. Just sort of think that for that. I'll probably chuck that in here later on. But we all know about that. So, Tim <coughs> Hans has been backed by years of science. We've got a double-blind, placebo-controlled crossover study that's been published in the peer-reviewed peer -reviewed medical journal of the cardiovascular revascularization medicine showing that aphanosoma non plus aqua has the ability to release stem cells from the bone marrow. Three weeks to get that out. <laughs> calling it AFA, which is the algae, aphanosoma non floss aqua. It was just about two weeks to get that one out and go. I haven't put any time into that PEA yet because that's just a little side thing. So there's lots of um, years of research showing that the algae itself from the lake has very, very specific compounds that help a wide range of benefits throughout the health. Um, and one of the yeah, why not? The algae itself is like really amazing. The algae would, has been like on the market for about 40, 50 years now. And they used to just like take the algae out of the lake, they'd dry it, put it in capsules, and it was whole AFA. And people were taking this AFA and they're getting all these sort of health benefits, better cardiovascular function, better hormonal function, better with their um, brain function, all sorts of different things were improving. And the company was getting a whole bunch of letters talking about these res results that people were getting. And they said, oh, okay, oh, well, that's really cool. So, you know, really good. So they brought the scientists in because they wanted to find out what made this algae tick. And what they did is they brought the scientists in, the scientists pulled the algae apart, and it's got all these vitamins, minerals, amino acids, fatty, um, fatty acids, etc., etc. And they said, yo, it's like a perfect food. But if you took all of this nutrition, you wouldn't see these results um, from, from these chronic degenerative illnesses. So we don't actually know how people are getting these results. So that was sort of like late 90s. And then early 2000, a research paper came out and its, it's title was Turning Blood into Brain. And what happened there was that scientists took some of the CD34, the stem cells that are floating around in our system, they took some of those stem cells, they put them into a beaker, and there was a screen in the beaker that no cell could pass through. Only chemical messengers could get through. And they put the, some brain tissue in there, they put the screen on top, and then they put some stem cells on top of that. And then about six hours later, those stem cells have been activated by these chemical messengers and they turned on the gene and became brand new neurons. So that was the title of the study, turning blood, those stem cells, into brain. And then they repeated that with liver tissue, with um, pancreatic tissue, with kidney tissue. So a picture was being developed that these stem cells aren't just floating around making new blood vessels and making new immune cells, which is what they thought was the, their only function. So now they know that these stem cells are actually turning into all of these other tissues in the body. So the company said, well, 
they wrote an article that was published in the uh, Medical Hypotheses Journal, um, and they said, and they were the first people to say, you know, we think through the science that's coming out that your stem cells constitute your body's own repair system. And now it's been proven absolutely like years ago now that that is what they're actually doing. They constitute the body's repair system. But what was really exciting for them was that when they thought about it, if you had something that supported stem cell physiology, you'd see a wide range of variety, uh, wide range of results. And that's what they were seeing with the algae, that people were taking it, some people heart was getting better, some people their livers were getting better, etc, etc. So they went back into the lab and they measured people's circulating stem cells. Then they gave them two capsules and four capsules. When they got up to 10 capsules of AFA, whole AFA, they found people were having a 25% increase in the numbers of circulating stem cells they had. So that was their aha moment, that this algae supported stem cell release. So they knew that they can't go around telling people that, oh, you've got to take 10 capsules three times a day. So they went back into the lab again. They found and identified those compounds that were responsible for the stem cell release. They made a five to one concentrate and that product or the, the name that they gave that was Stem Enhance. I started with you know, 12 years ago. And since then they've found different products, different plants from around the world and that's made the blend of what we actually have now, um, which is the Stem Enhance Ultra. So that was just a little bit of a side of, of you know, how this whole story of this algae, how stem cell nutrition actually first started. I have no idea where I am now. It's like a bunk <laughs> Okay, right. Yeah, this is quite a good one. Not just because I made it, but <laughs> it explains quite a bit. Cellular, I always get the intro L in there as well. Cellular nutrition versus stem cell nutrition. Now, we're all eating food, we're taking vitamins and minerals and antioxidants to protect the cells of our body. We're drinking plenty of water to hydrate our bodies and we're drip air. We're breathing in plenty of fresh air to oxygenate all our cells. So this is what we're doing on a daily basis. This is for all of these cells in our body that we've got cruising around and doing their job. But when that cell comes to the end of its life, there's nothing you can do. You can feed them the best nutrition. You can breathe in the best air. You can drink the purest water. But that's just gonna help them while they're there. It's not going to make them live any longer. It's not going to so make them much stronger than what they do because once they're doing their job, they're doing their job. But the stem cell nutrition is really quite different because that helps to replace those dying cells. It supports that whole process. And just to point this out, you know, who's got some nice green grass out in the back lawn? The backyard. Yep. The back, out the back of the house. Right? You fertilize the lawn. I oh, know you, you fertilize here, right? Sure, we Yeah, of course you do. Yeah, you, you fertilize the lawn. So, yep, so you fertilize the lawn, you water the lawn, and you get your spiky shoes out, and you go out and you aerate the lawn, right? So you're doing all that, and you have the beautiful green grass. But then you're going to move that great big pot plant out the way, and you move it somewhere else, and you've got that dead patch. Now, no matter how much you fertilize that, water it and aerate it, you're not going to grow any new grass. You need new seed to grow new grass. And that's what your stem cells are. That's the new seed within your body that's going to grow that new healthy tissue. Okay. So, so they're all, they're doing all the stem cell stuff. And then they're having to look around at what other things are happening in people's bodies. And they realize that there's a whole bunch of inflammation. Because inflammation is like this. We can't have the microphone on tonight because of the static that's coming in. And when you've got static, which is like inflammation in the body, you can't really hear where the sound is coming from. So if you've got these stem cells floating around and you've got all this inflammation happening, your stem cells can't find those little messengers to 
go where they need to go. So if you reduce that inflammation, if we turn down that static, then we can hear people clearly across the room. And so that's what inflammation does. It actually blocks out and creates confusion within there. And then of course your stem cells, they have to get around your body. And they get around your body through your circulatory system. So they worked out that you know, some people were getting like fantastic results, but then the people that were having you know, not getting the results that they required or desired, that their circulation was down a bit. You know, they're having troubles with circulation. So they developed another couple of products that addressed the, the inflammation and also helped to increase that circulation in your body as well to allow those stem cells to get to where they need to go. And of course, they added in the thing, and I was like, what are you doing this for? You know, they did this whole appearance thing with some other skincare stuff. And I said, yeah, what are you doing that for? You know, and they said, well, if we're doing all this other stuff for internally helping our body to repair and regenerate, if we can help people just to shift over to a much more natural, you know, chemical-free product, they're not going to be putting toxins back into their body. So I thought, okay, yeah, that, that's fair enough. So they did this other part here as well. So we'll just cover these inflammation and circulation ones quite quickly. So Cyactive is actually made of a concentrate of that blue compound that's actually in the stem enhance. So it's just a much bigger sort of hit that people can get to reduce and balance that whole body inflammation. It reduces oxidative stress, which when we're like, you know, exposed to toxins and um, poisons and things like that, that can increase and it helps to provide cellular protection against the formation of new oxidative stress as well. Then they looked at the Cyactive and rather than doing just whole body inflammation, they said, well, if we mix it with some eggshell membrane, some Boxwellia, which is the frankincense, and some tart cherry extract, then we can actually have something that really targets and reduces local inflammation in the joints. So really aiding in mobility and reducing swelling, helping mobility and helping flexibility as well. So they've been targeting on that. And then of course, as I say, the plasma flow, that really helps to clean, protect and strengthen the whole circulatory system. And it also helps digest the fibre and mesh. This is a thing that can build up from about the age of 30 that starts building up and blocking the blood vessels within the body. So that then limits the stem cells' ability to get to where they need to go. So again, very, very specific product here. And in the cereal, the skin care, for people wanting instant results. So you can apply this and then within three to five minutes, it can help take away the fine lines and wrinkles. It's very hydrating. It's actually uh, isotonic seawater. So purified seawater, which is almost identical to the plasma that runs in our in our veins. So when our body seeks that, it really draws it in. So it's really hydrating to the skin. And all the algae, the seaweeds, are from a UNESCO reserve from Brittany off the coast of France. So there's a hundred thousand hectares of area there that's um that the, that's a marine reserve. So they harvest that all from there. And then we've got a skin cream, which is a prime. I don't do makeup and stuff, so it's like sort of out. So it's like a primer. It's colour correction, so it corrects colour. And then it's also a very strong moisturiser again. And it's universal skin tone, so it comes out sort of like a light, light sort of like yellowy colour, but then it actually adapts to the colour of the skin that people have. So really pretty good. And then we've got a this has just been released in America about three or four weeks ago. It's a two-in-one skin cleanser and makeup remover. And my daughter does a lot of dancing. She's got like really thick makeup on. And I've got a picture somewhere else that she's taken half of the makeup off, put it on, left it for a few, what, minutes? Basically, moments. you just put it on, wipe it off with a cotton pad, and the makeup's gone. Yeah. And it will take waterproof mascara off. Yeah. So really good. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we've got a uh, sensitive to normal skin, and then there's a combination to oily as well. So we've got those for 
I think there's a little bit up there that provides on your skin. And it's also designed, you don't need to wipe it off afterwards. You don't wash it off. You don't wash it off. Sam, you've got that makeup off and you've got that there, and then you're not washing that off, isn't that? Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is the raw product. Yeah, you know, they really are the key to you know, sleeping better, waking, feeling more refreshed, having better mental clarity, more energised, feeling more better, looking younger. But ultimately, it's about the skin. So, I'm going to go through some of the other things that we've done with the skin. Yeah, and I'm going to go through some of the other things that we've done with the skin. This is about stem cell repair. So this is quite a visual of what stem enhance can actually do in the real world. This is about a, a bunch of mice. They got irradiated to kill off all of their stem cells. And then there was this uh, stem cell that had a green fluorescent protein attached to it. So all the daughter cells would become fluorescent and you'd hold that blue light thing over top of them and it'll glow green. So, because otherwise, if you took a stem cell and you put it into the, under the skin, it would turn into a skin cell and it would be an invisible process. So scientists, the scientists who actually developed this, they won a um, Nobel Prize for it, that the work that they've done with this green fluorescent protein and then tagging. So what we've got here is we've got the anterior tibialis muscle. So we've got a mouse who's just cruising around the what do we call it? Cage? Yep. <laughs> Mouse is cruising around the cage. He's got cells that are dying off and cells that are being replaced. So that's just your day-to-day -day walking around. We've got another mouse. He's cruising around. One day he falls over. Hurts his leg. So now he's got damage. So that damage, those damaged cells, send out a signal to the bone marrow. <coughs> those bone marrow stem cells come out and then they start repairing that damage. So as you can see, there's a lot more stem cells that have gone there to do the repair. Now here's my favourite mouse. He's the Sorol stem cell mouse, because he's cruising along. He falls over, hurts his leg. He reaches into his mouse handbag, pulls out a stem and hearts, knocks a few back. <laughs> and that's the sort of repair that he gets. So a lot more stem cells in circulation means your body can really do a lot more repair. And this goes not only just for like injuries in your leg, this is tissue throughout your whole body. And when they sacrifice these mice to actually take these pictures, when they were under the, the fluorescent lights, those stem cells were fluorescent heart, liver, brain, spinal column, bone, kidney cells, bladder cells. Those, that one stem cell that was put into those mice had repopulated the whole bone marrow population and they've gone out and started to repair every single tissue in the body. So that's what your stem cells do. That's why supporting them is really, really important. So real people and some real results. So here we've got a lady who had macular degeneration. So she's got eye cells that are dying off that aren't being replaced. And she goes on to two capsules twice a day, four months later, her stem cells have travelled to her eye and her eyes have improved their health. So her vision goes back to normal. Uh, another guy here, 81 years old, he's going in for a knee replacement. He's got no cartilage in his knee and he's got poor bone density. Yeah, See that's a little bit grey there. So that the x-ray is going straight through there, so it's a little bit grey, darker there. So he goes on to two, he gets put on the waiting list for this operation. Two capsules twice a day, seven months later, his stem cells have gone to his knee and he's growing all this cartilage back. And his bone density has increased as well. So he had osteoporosis and osteoarthritis and both re reversed. And he was told by his doctor that he no longer needed a knee replacement. He says, you know, you're not good. So he already knew before he went back that he would no longer need that, that operation. Um, and this is something we don't see with any other supplements. You hear about people taking glucosamine and chondroitin and things like that. Glucosamine and chondroitin are a nutrition that feed cartilage cells. So if you've got a cartilage cell that just needs feeding, it'll plump it up. So if you've got a few cartilage cells, you, know, you can take glucosamine in that, It'll feed those cells, plump them up, and you get yeah, a bit of relief, and that's really good. 
but people that don't have the cartilage, they'll take the glucosamine chondroitin and they'll go, oh, well, I haven't noticed any difference at all. And that's because they're more bone on bone. They haven't got the cartilage to actually clump up. They need new cartilage. And this is where, you know, you hear about a lot of people now, they're going into the stem cell injections, um, where they'll take their own stem cells, they centrifuge them out, and then some places will just inject those stem cells back in. Other places will actually take out a bit of cartilage. They'll put it in with the stem cells, and then when those stem cells turn on the gene to become the cartilage cells, then they inject them back in, hoping that they'll attach themselves and do and, and do that to the cartilage. Um, but if they're just floating around, there's no real anchor for them. Um, so sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And with that sort of thing too, what they're sort of finding now is that with stem cell injections, I think about sort of six to nine months, 12 months, people are getting relief from that because they haven't really done anything as to why wasn't the body repairing itself in the first place. So if you're taking stem cell nutrition, those stem cells are going to all the different glands, changing the environment of the body. And why is the body healing itself? Well, because, because there's an autoimmune thing going on. So your stem cells can help balance that out. The stem cells can go and become new cartilage. They can help you know, strengthen the heart, which improves the circulation, etc. So there's all different facets of how this actually works in the body. Now another one here, this is um, a picture of an ulcer on someone's ankle, so if you don't want to, it's not like a horrible, horrible one. So this here, this is an example of that fibrin that I was talking about, the stuff that blocks up the blood vessels. So the fibrin here is this white tissue, black skin, but that's blocked up by that fibrin. So it blocks up the blood vessels and the stem cells can't get to where they need to go. So there's no repair happening there. So what happened is this guy, 18 months he had this ulcer, 15 days after he started using stem and hearts, it's basically all healed up. Um, he was also taking the plasma flow as well, clean out those blood vessels, then increase those stem cells. They were able to get there, start doing the repair, and then it was only about another sort of four weeks um, before that had healed over and scattered completely. So that was um, so a little bit of experience here so we're talking about stem cell nutrition you've seen stem enhance here so how many do people take well in America I can only talk about what's on the bottle and on the bottle it says take two capsules once to twice a day and I was told while I was in Tyler that I can say something like if I was taking the product, this is what I would do. <laughs> but I still have my little disclaimer thing that we've got there as well. So if I was taking this product, and I had something going on in my health, I worked out a little pattern in my mind, and it goes like this. Most adults do really well taking two capsules twice a day. If you've got a bit more going on than average, do six a day. If you're in a bit of a pickle, take nine. And if you're munted, take 12. <laughs> now, munted obviously is worse, but that's a Kiwi word, of course. Munted is obviously worse than being in a pickle. <laughs> this is, yeah. So that's what I would be doing <coughs> if I was in a certain situation in my health. Yeah. So there, there's no upper limit to what people can take. I injured my leg a uh, couple of weeks ago couple of months ago I think now, no probably six weeks, and I just went, I, I went straight inside, I took six, about four hours later I took another six, four hours later I took another six, and I just did that for like three days in a row. I was told by the doctor after the first day that it was going to take me about uh, seven to ten days before I could walk properly, and in three days I was walking absolutely fine, um, because I was able to reduce that inflammation, my body was able to repair, and it just did it really, really quickly. I've seen guys, you know, mid-50s that are playing soccer, football, no, what do you call it? Soccer? Soccer. Hey? Yeah. Yeah. Round ball game. And he was going to kick the ball and his leg rolled over that and he, you know, did the old split thing 
and he was black from here down to his knee. He went straight to his back, took six straight away, and then um, he took six again that night. The following day, he was back running. The next day after that, he was out back at practice, and then he was playing the, the game of the following weekend. So again, getting onto those stem and hearts really, really quickly after that injury. Yeah. So you can use it really like that. We see people um, that are having operations that are being told by their doctors because when they go back into the recovery and then back to the ward, they start taking like you know, four or six at a time. They do that, and then within a matter of only a few weeks, you know, they go back for an evaluation and the doctor saying, you know, what are you doing walking upright? You know, you should be down here. What are you doing lifting your arm up here? You only should be here. So we're seeing a lot of you know, very rapid recovery after the post-surgery. And um, to, to the sort of the, the, the state where yeah, people are really sort of starting to notice what, what's going on uh, in that area. Now, they're not really supposed to have testimonial booklets, but his one was worse than anything because it had a whole bunch of incredible results. Go you know, four weeks and people's blood sugars were coming right back down from being way up here and really stabilizing. You know, people with heart disease, arthritis and that, changing, you know, six, eight weeks, they were they were getting results. And I said to Ian, I said, Ian, you've got to get rid of this book. And he says, oh, why? It's not really, really good. I said, that's too good. Keeping some of those really good results but put in the average result. Because what he had found is that he was having quite a high return rate to the company. Because we've got a money back guarantee on the products. And he was having quite a high return rate because people were reading these results and they were going, oh, well, this guy in the book, he was better in four weeks. I've been taking it for six weeks. This stuff doesn't work. And so when we replaced some of those, and I've met all of those people. so. There wasn't a lie in there, no exaggeration or anything. We could look at medical results of where things had stabilised and where they had improved. So we had all of that going on. And when he started putting those results in, as people started realising that being on it for a longer period of time gave you those deeper results, then we really started seeing those really good deep healing within the body. And that was like, you know, it's really important. If someone says to me in my clinic, they say, oh, yeah, I'll try a bottle for a month. I say, well, you, know, you don't really understand it. Um, I know that acupuncture works. I know it's really good. It's been around for 10,000 years. And if it wasn't good and it didn't work, then people wouldn't, then it wouldn't still be around. And this is in that same sort of category. I don't want people <coughs> taking this, going, oh, I tried that for a month and it didn't work because that will stop somebody else taking it, that could really change their life. And so this is where I really want to sort of educate people in, in having that long-term you know, mindset of being able to really look after and really change their bodies and really change how they live. Yeah. So that, that's really that. Um, do we want to do questions now? Do we want to? Yes. Uh, does, yeah. does anyone have questions? So, do you have different products for your different situations? Like you had the woman with the eyes, <coughs> what product do you recommend for her? Stem Enhance Ultra. Okay. Okay. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have other questions. Yep. Mm -hmm. I put everybody who comes in the clinic on Stem Enhance Ultra alone, by itself, for at least the first three to four months. And the reason for that is that some people go, oh, I want to take the sciatic joint because I've got a sore joint. I go, yeah, but why have you got that sore joint? It's because there's damage there that hasn't been repaired. And you need to get those stem cells out there. You can take the anti-inflammatory products, that's fine. It'll reduce the inflammation and give you a bit of symptomatic relief. But when you stop taking that, then you know, it sort of goes back to normal because that repair hasn't really happened. So everybody, regardless of what health condition or complaint they have, they all go on that stem enhance first. And because that you know, releases those stem cells, you know, they can go to that area, so you can get people taking like you know, four a day, six a day, and then we get them to like say maybe take three capsules, and then go and exercise that area mildly, not overdoing it, 
And because as you work that part of the body, it starts to aggravate it. And of course, when you aggravate a tissue, it starts calling for stem cells. And then they go there, they start doing that repair work. I was on stem and arms about three years, and I was just getting back into my surfing, and I was paddling around, I thought, you know, and I had a, I was climbing up the, the bank of the river with my dog, and I grabbed a tree root, and I was climbing up, my foot slipped on, and I thought, oh no, I'm going to be one of those people. You know, when I get old, I'm going to have that shoulder problem. And sure enough, it was sort of like hanging around for quite a while, six or seven years. And I'd been on Stem and Hearts for about three years, and I was doing some surfing, and about half an hour into my surfing, I just, you know, couldn't lift my arms to do the work. Now I thought, you know, you'd think, oh, so I have the joint, so I have to reduce that inflammation, help that shoulder. But then when I thought about, you know, that whole mechanism, of what stem cells do, I thought, well, there's repair that needs to be done. So I started taking two stem enhancements before I went surfing, and then two after I went surfing. And I just added that into my thing, and then it was about sort of three or four months later, I realised I'd been out in the water for three hours, and I had no pain discomfort. So releasing those stem cells was what my body needed. And it also creates a really good base in people's bodies. So if different hormones are lacking, if different things are going on, you can really find a really good strong base for people to, you know, just on that stem enhance alone. Yeah. So some of my clients have osteopenia and osteoporosis, so you can start with that, but continue the exercise, correct? Because you still want them to have that physical ability yes. to enhance that healing process. Correct. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So because we can't really make <coughs> all the stem enhance, we can't get a bottle of stem enhance and shake it three times this way and once over here and all of those stem cells that you're going to be releasing will go to your knee. But you can do that whole exercise thing because we can't tell the stem cells where to go. I talk to a lot of people in clinic and I say, look, you know, what do you think is going on? And they go, oh, but you're the practitioner, you don't use the thing. I says, nah, you know your body better than any practitioner ever will. And they go, yeah, okay, so when do you think this happens and what sort of aggravates it? And then they, they spell it out and they go, yeah, well, that makes sense. Then we start talking about stem and hands. And I say, at the end of the conversation, I say, now, you know your body better than any other practitioner, but your stem cells know your body better than you. And because they will go where they are needed, not where we want them to go. We can take them, do some exercise, and get them to sort of go to a sort of an area by triggering that. It doesn't mean if you're diabetic, you know, you take some stem and hearts and head off down to the bakery and start eating a whole bunch of cakes. So it doesn't sort of work like that. Okay, well, I usually Thanks. get a good laugh in New Zealand. <laughs> 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 we think it too hard. Yeah. And macular degeneration. Yeah, again, stem and hearts. Yes. yes. And is there any kind of movement, anything with the eye muscles? No, I think that's just that actual, the actual cellular loss. Yes. So yeah. So if there was trouble like moving the eyes and the, the <coughs> muscle, and, and the movement of the eyes was was down, mm -hmm. then through atrophy of the actual eye muscle that moved the eye, then some eye exercises with that. But we just see people go you know, generally six a day for that. With macular degeneration. With macular degeneration. Yeah. Not that we treat you. Yeah. Is, is there any downside to the increased production of stem cells? No. Mm -hmm. no. There's only improved health. It's not like we, we don't drain those stem cells because, again, at the beginning, those stem cells, they just divide. So it's sort of like um, you're a car guy. You like your cars? Yeah. Right? You're driving along your car. Six months later, you know, it needs an oil change or something. Why do you want to keep an old car on the road when in your bone marrow you've got billions of cars. So I was jumping out of that car, I was jumping in a new one. So you can drive that for six months, and you jump out of that and jump into a new one. So rather than trying to keep our cells healthy in that, um, we've just got this unlimited supply that will just keep on repairing our body. So there's no real downside to doing this at all. Um, if people were taking like 12 a day, doing that for like two years, and then they stop like that, there's no withdrawal, there's no you know, addiction or anything like that. Any tissue that they've regained, 
like your heart cells take four months to die. They'll just keep dying at four months. You know, your eye cells, they'll just keep dying at three months. But you've done so much more repair that you just go back into your, your normal aging, that normal deterioration process. So there's no real, yeah. yeah. Oh, I've tried, I've, I've gone on to like um, 14 and 16 a day, did that for like three months, didn't really notice any difference at all. Went down and tried none for about two weeks. And all I found was that I just didn't have the edge that I had while I was on it. You know, PEA effect, the stamina, that sort of thing. So I just keep on my, you know, I just do six a day, you know, my maintenance amount. And I've been doing that for years now, and I just keep on doing it. It's one of the supplements, though, that I think that um, because we have that natural decline or that natural stickiness with the bone marrow, as that gets stickier, as I get older, once I hit like 60, then I'll go to 80 day to try and <coughs> balance that, that stickiness from the aging. So I'll go up a little bit, and then when I hit 80, I'll probably go up to another two above that, and so on. Yeah, because I want to replace as many of my cells as possible. And so I'm, that's all I'm going to do, just keep on doing that. I used to have a cupboard full of stuff. Now I just take the one step in hearts. Yeah. The step yes. in hearts. Is it um, another um, product from the sea? Mm -hmm. Is it blue algae also, or is it yep. another whole food? Yep, so in the step in hearts, there's the blue-green algae from Klamath Lake, and there's a seaweed from off the coast of Tasmania. Yeah, so it has those two in there. And then there is another extract of another algae as well. So they've been the concentrates of those plants. Yeah. So we've had some people say, oh, well, I can get AFA, the blue-green algae. I can buy some of the wakami, and I'll just take it dietary-wise. And they've got to, to get that same sort of effect They've got to have like you know, 20 capsules of that a day, and they've got to have you know, eat half a kilo, a pound of this a day, and then something else. So it's just it just doesn't work, you know, to be able to have that concentrated form of it. So yeah, whole food extracts. Yeah. So, do you ever attribute any effect of the product for? Someone with cataracts and doesn't assist with that? Have you noticed anything? Yeah, that's a different that's thing. If we, yeah, if we could talk afterwards about okay. that, because it's quite a bit okay. <coughs> Yes. Well, um, this wasn't planned, but I started on the, I don't even know the name, it's Stem Enhance Ultra. Yep. About six weeks ago to two months ago, somewhere in there. And I'm going very slowly. I only take two a day. Okay. After about two to three days, I can feel much a stamina. I'm very so. energetic, but I do <coughs> just go, you know. And I wouldn't go out in the evening, I'd want to nap in the afternoon, you know, things like that. Yep. And there more. Excellent. There more. Yeah, I yeah. really feel good. Yep. So, so that stamina, it's quite different, isn't it, from yes. like taking, you know, B vitamins or caffeine or things like that. It's, it's not it's an a, excitability. Yes, it, it's a deeper level of. Yeah. It's just there, yeah. and that energy is like when you wake up on a good morning, that yeah. kind of feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess the mood enhancement is also part of it, which I did not know about. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a happy day. Brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. What about from rheumatoid arthritis? That's yep. in the okay. hand, you talk about how the stem cells go to the area that needs to be healed and you yep. exercise. What if it's, say, your hands, your knees, shoulders? So you have one that calms the whole body inflammation and then you have one that helps with joint support and mobility. Yep. And then the heart, the one you recommend to take as a baseline. Yep. Yep. So what do you recommend for it's Okay, so, so if someone's, yeah, because I look at the stem and hands, it's always been that underlying depletion of why something's there in the first place. And, or why something's not getting better. So if someone does have like you know, arthritis that's really sort of you know, affecting their day-to-day -day living, I'd have somebody on like uh, four capsules of stem enhance a day, along with, in the site of joint, there's 120 capsules. Because when they did the clinical studies on that, they found that two, yeah, it made an effect, but when they increased that to four, 
it made a very significant effect in pain relief and the ability for movement. So what I would be doing if someone came in and they really had you know, that joint stuff affecting their day-to-day -day living, I'd have them on four capsules of stem enhance a day, along with four capsules of sciatic joint a day. And we, and we call that in New Zealand, that's our broken down pharma pack. Because you know, they've been doing all the hard work all their lives, you know, they need those resources in their body to be able to you know, get going. Yeah, so I'd be looking at that. So you wouldn't do the whole body, the one uh, for the whole body inflammation? No, as no, well? yeah, yeah, because the stem enhance contains that phycocyanin, oh. the, the blue, um, but it's also going to help repair that, that underlying. Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. Do you want to do another draw? Yes. How you been? Nice yeah, you sitting so good, quiet. Interesting, huh? And uh, so, thank you, John. I just wanted to, to say that what started this journey for me as a doctor of natural medicine is that it started with something very personal and that was because I had a mother, I still do, um, but she happened to break her left femur in four places and in doing so uh, it's been a long recovery of about a year and six months now and so I started doing research on what would help her repair. Um, our local uh, surgeon here, orthopedic surgeon, said that he could actually do that type of femur repair in his sleep because he had done it so many times before. Um, however, he stated to my father and I that um, my, my mother's surgery was different like he had never seen because when he put the rod in her leg and he was screwing in those titanium um, plates or should I say screws, he says, and a quote, he says, they went in as smooth as butter. He said he had never seen the bone so porous that he said he actually put a couple extras because he was so worried about whether or not it was going to hold. So I did, I did a lot of research, and I started out by doing research on uh, stem cells, which is the umbilical cord stem cells, where you can actually receive that in the form of an injection. So, you know, we were thinking that uh, we would inject her leg with the, the umbilical cord stem cells. I went to several presentations in Texas and here locally. Uh, where we do have, you know, doctors that do offer uh, that type of stem cell therapy. I spent many hours and many nights and mornings around the clock uh, being a person on PubMed. Uh, so I uh, researched thoroughly uh, what, what the uh, scientific research, the findings, found out that it's not FDA approved here in the United States but that we did have laboratories that were following all the guidelines, the FDA guidelines, the, the guidelines of uh, the American Blood Bankers Association, and so forth. So there was, you know, following the guidelines, um, and but with, we're not getting spot checked. Um, I also found that a lot of people could flip a coin and say whether or not these type of stem cell whether it be IV or injection or both, uh, that it could work or maybe it didn't work. But there was a lot of reasons through my research that I found that it did or it didn't. But the fact was that what I, across the board that I found is that these stem cells, they have a blueprint. Just like John said, they do what they're supposed to do. So if they're supposed to, and they turn into, you know, a pancreatic, uh, you know, to make a, a pancreas or to make a liver, to make a heart, that's what they are, that's what they do. So, um, but what I found out is that the the, the coin flipping, the 50-50, came from that we have a lot of laboratories, and it and it 
Panama as well, because I was also, you know, on this late night uh, stem cell 101, where I, I heard the stories, well, we go to Panama, or well, we go here, you know, and they go different places, and this stem cell worked for me. Well, this one didn't. But what I found out is they have something that's called 360s. That means it's dead on arrival. So you can get these stem cells. You can have a laboratory that's doing what they're supposed to be doing, although they're not being checked out by the FDA. You can have them shipped. And these are a lot of ifs. You can have them shipped frozen at the right temperature. Um, you can bring them to the, the clinic, the doctor's office, and, and they still be good. Now, all of those are variables, and there could be something that happens along the way that makes that coin flip. Look, it had a 9 o'clock appointment that was supposed to get the injection in the IV that didn't show up, but the nurse didn't know, and so she says, well, I'm just going to leave this, 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 this it's thaw, it's ready to go, and we have another appointment at 12.30. Okay, so dead on arrival, 360s, sitting there thawing out and dying. So what does that person get? A 360. So, but there is, let me, let me just retract. When, you, when everything happens the way it's supposed to happen, and you get the injection and it's with purpose, intention, in the knee, because you got a, you know, a bad knee, you, uh, or you have a dislocated shoulder, whatever the case is, they usually give you an injection, but then they, if, if they really want to, you know, like cover all their bases, they'll do it IV as well, so that it can circulate throughout the body. Did we hear about that tonight? So we could have some circulating stem cells that go where they know they need to be. So another case is, well, it didn't work. Well, I'm sorry. Maybe you didn't realize that you were going to have a heart attack next week at 6.15, but you're going to be okay now because the stem cells knew what was priority on your list. It knew that it needed to do some repair here and that this can wait. So. I just wanted to say that because of what I, t and then there's another, and I'm going to cut it, but uh, there's, there's other places that you can actually use your own stem cells. They can, you know, draw stem cells from your bone marrow. But in researching that, I also found that, hey, age has a lot to do with it. And so if you're a 72-year-old woman or an 89-year-old woman, that may not be a good choice because the number that they're going to be able to spin down, that's going to be live and active, doing their job, is going to be minute as to, to what you really need uh, to heal itself. So I just wanted to add that in. Those are all wonderful choices, but to do your homework, if you, if you do feel like you know, you'd like to activate your own stem cells, they're ours. We don't get them from anyone else. And the, the idea is just to get them and, and get them activated and, and get them going. Uh, you're not going to run out. If we started uh, doing activating our own stem cells today, uh, we could all live to 130 plus. And like John said, what you came in with is what you go out with. So it's it's not like you're gonna you know like run out or you know empty the fridge. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be there for you. The idea is just to get them to work for you. And so that's what this does is it activates, it turns it on, just turns the key and says, let's go. And so thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. About 1 to 1.5 million stem cells. When we're talking about a 34% increase, we're talking about 7 to 9 million. So you'll pay thousands of dollars for a stem cell injection, IV just into bloodstream, and yet you can take two capsules that will cause you know, seven to nine million release within an hour. And they're costing you like a buck. Two capsules. Two capsules. Seven to nine million. Is there any more questions? No, I think that's a good point. I was going to ask you on the research what the costs were, you know, the medical. medical. 
Okay. You said your cause, and then just brought that up. Okay, Thank yeah, you. yeah. So I think the stem cell injections range anywhere from about three to five, seven thousand um, dollars. One cc, one cc, about three thousand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So all that, and then. Um, We've got different like packs that people can start with. We've got a one, three, and six bottle pack, sort of depending on what people want. Like um, if someone has like you know wants to just do four capsules a day, they can buy like a, a six bottle pack, and that would be enough to last for three months, taking you know four capsules a day. If someone's got sort of more going on with their health, then they might buy a six pack and do three ca uh, six capsules a day. And then that's what two months of life. And then they can pick and fly to auto ship and get an automatic shipment sent to them. And they get that at a discounted amount. So then you just have your ongoing health. So what you're saying is you can't overdose on the health? You can't overdose on the health. Okay. No, that's right. No.